Hi, welcome to Red Pixel Live. My name's Adam Hamlin, um, and um, I'd like to thank iColite very much for sponsoring this episode. iColite do a huge range of housing, strobes, ports, arms, and, and pretty much anything you could want for underwater photography. Um, please head on over to iColite.com to check out what they do. Um, I'm joined by uh, my fellow photographer and friend, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. Um, we haven't used any Russian naming recently. I have to revert to that. Um, but, uh, but anyway, which reminds me, because we were having a conversation um, a couple of days ago and we spoke about, we were talking about metering modes um, and we spoke about screen brightness. So I thought I'd ask you, Alex, what do you do with your, with your camera's screen brightness when you're underwater? It's quite a, a common question, this. And it's really linked to the fact that in our metering modes conversation, you and I both sort of settled on the fact that the best metering mode to use for your camera is looking at your LCD screen and using your eyeballs and making adjustments based on how you want your pictures to look. Yep. You know, the correct exposure for the picture is the one that looks best to you, yep. not the one that your camera thinks is correct. So, yep. you know, it, it kind of comes from all of that. However, if you're going to make that judgment call, you need to trust your LCD screen is telling you the truth. Yep. And there's a, a couple of factors that, that relate to that. But the, the first one that I think m most underwater photographers come across pretty early on in their digital photography is that on a typical scuba dive, it's darker than it is on land. Yeah. And as a result, our LCD screens look brighter than they do on land. And it was as a result, underwater photographers quite commonly routinely underexpose their pictures. Yeah. Um, and they're doing this because the pictures look nice and bright on the LCD screen in the dark underwater world. And therefore, they don't, you know, expose them brightly enough. And then when they get them back on the camera, on the computer, they're like, oh, they want a little bit dark. And, you know, I wish I'd put a bit more light into everything. I'd run my exposures a little bit longer to let the, the light burn in uh, a little bit more, turn my flash guns up a little bit. Mm. And so one piece of advice that's been around in underwater photography for a long time, and I think, as you mentioned in the last talk, um, um, our friend Martin Edge was one of the first people to encourage photographers to think about doing this, is to go into your camera's LCD settings, and instead of having the LCD on the default setting, to set it to minus one in terms of brightness mm. um, for underwater use. Mm. The thinking behind this is that if your LCD screen is a little less bright, it probably more um, more accurately reflects um, the correct look in a dark environment, yep. and as a result, you tend to you're more likely to correctly expose your pictures. So if you are routinely underexposing your underwater pictures a little bit, yep. turning your screen brightness down is a good way to compensate that because your pictures won't look so bright underwater. And as a result, you'll be motivated and, and encouraged to to get those exposures right. Yep. And I know a lot of photographers who re that's really helped them. I think the, oh, sorry. the I think the other the other thing that and maybe this is where you were going, Alex, but the the other thing I think you really need to do is you need to study you need to generate a, a, an understanding of how your LCD looks and different cameras will actually produce different results. So it's not simply a question of, of, of being able to look at your screen and go, that's right, that's wrong, because different cameras will produce slightly different results. So so you need to spend some time. And I think this is really where the idea of being quite, you know, when you download your images off the card, have a look at the image. And if they're all appearing dark and you'd be looking at the LCD and think it looks right, well, that's your that's your thing that you actually need to make the, the LCD look a bit brighter or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's a learning process. And, it, you know, it does take a little while. Um, I don't, you know, for me, I get a new camera. It takes me certainly a few dives to get it dialed in till I get to the stage where I am starting to be happy with 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 using mm -hmm. my 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 uh, screen to, to value exposure. So. So, yeah, it takes a little bit of time. Sorry, Alex, you were saying. No, no, it's a really good point. And actually, my two main cameras, my Nikon D5 and my Nikon D850, they actually have quite an obvious offset between the, how yep. the LCD screens look. Yep. And, you know, it's really surprising because they're two cameras from the same manufacturer released in the same period. They're yep. both got related DNA inside them. Yep. And they're really quite different. Yep. Um, anyway, but yeah, no, the point I was going to make, though, is is, exact, is kind of building on from that is if you're making this change to the LCD screen, make it as a permanent step change. Yep. Where you'll go wrong is if you're constantly jumping about with this. Yep. This is not something to be changing. Oh, this dive is a bit cloudy today. Yep. I'll turn it down. Oh, it's really sunny today. I'll turn it up. Yep. You know, leave it, you know, leave it where it is. The most important thing as a photographer is to learn what your what a correct exposure looks like 
on your LCD screen. Yeah. And if you're constantly changing that LCD screen brightness, you're chasing intellectually a moving target and you're going to not get your exposure right. So I'd really encourage you to, you know, to if you're going to make this change, make it and stick with it. It's a consistent And maybe, thing. you know, maybe yeah. when you come back and do topside photography after the trip, put it back to zero. And then when you go back on the next dive trip, put it back to minus one, yeah. you know, write it as a, you know, I know a lot of photographers, they take a little notebook with their camera and they write down, oh, these are my normal jump settings. These are, this is where I like the autofocus. This is where I like the ISO. Yeah. And this is one of those things to put in that list because you've been, maybe it's been, you know, three or four months since you last went diving. Yeah. You've been using your camera to take, you know, kids' birthday party pictures and, and maybe did some, you know, flower pictures in the garden or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly it's back to underwater photography again. And suddenly you, you want to put all those settings in. And it's a good one to put on that list to go on. On a checklist. Um, yeah. The, the other thing that does affect how LCD screens look are also um, some of the processing settings on the camera. So this is, is a smaller effect, but on some cameras, it can have a really big effect on the look of your pictures in that a lot of the, um, so when you take a picture, even if you have your camera set to shoot raw pictures, as most serious underwater photographers do, yeah. the camera, the picture that the camera shows you on the LCD screen is not the raw file. Yeah. The camera shows you a low res JPEG file processed from that raw file. Even if you set the camera not to produce JPEGs, it still shows you a low res JPEG on that LCD screen. Okay. And to convert the raw file to a JPEG, the camera has to make some processing decisions. And if you have the processing of your camera all turned up to, to the maximum, mm. your potential picture on the back of your camera can look really different from how it's expected. And the Olympus cameras in particular are, are well known for really putting a lot of processing in to those LCD images. So what the camera's trying to do is to make your picture look as good as possible. So if you slightly underexpose things, slightly overexpose things, it'll tweak the JPEG processing a little bit to make things look good again. Yep. And while that might make you feel good underwater, it can make a bigger discrepancy between how your pictures look on the back of your camera um, and compared to how they will actually download when actually you put them into Lightroom yep. and you open them up and develop and you finally see the raw file yep. and you're like, oh gosh, yep. you know, it looks really dark and in, and that's because the camera's putting a lot of processing. So it's worth visiting those JPEG processing settings on your camera, even if you never shoot JPEG, and basically making sure that nothing is set to really oomph things up too much. Yeah, everything in the middle. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so yeah, using normals or using standards or using none can be good decisions in that because ultimately you want accuracy on that LCD screen. Yes, they may not look quite so good when you show someone else on the boat, but it will give you a more accurate representation. If you want them to look good on the boat, you can always quickly go in and most cameras have a, a processing function in them where you can actually go in and optimize yeah, the image it, yeah. and make it look fancy on the back of your camera yeah. to impress your buddies on the boat. And you can even <laughs> crop it a bit and go, look at that, straight on the back of the camera, not cropped at all because you're showing them the, the crop version. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm joking on that. But the, the, I mean, I think that it also brings us on to another interesting point, which is, is subtly related, but um, you know, you've got to expect as well that when you take the images off the card into your computer and Lightroom or whatever is now displaying a raw image, it's not going to look the same as it looks on the back of your camera. I think this is one point certainly where um, you can use the histogram in Lightroom. This is quite because that will allow you to determine whether you've managed your exposure correctly before you start doing the bit of post-processing post -processing, processing that's needed mm. to make the picture look the same. So so you have to expect that. You know, when you first take your, your image off the card, you're going to think, my God, I didn't shoot that. It didn't look like that in the back of the screen. That's not how it looked. Well, absolutely, it's not how it looked. Um, but as long as you've got the exposure right by using Eyeball Mark 1 and, and setting your, your LCD right, then in Lightroom, you can then make it look. And, and to be fair, Lightroom now has some 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 picture styles and stuff that you can put in there, which will make it look much closer to um, to how it looked on the back of your screen. But it will, it, you know, it's not gonna look the same. It, it's important, I think it's very easy to stick your card in and think, oh, what have I done? Why, why don't they look like? Why don't... Yeah, I, I think though where people get confused is there's always gonna be a offset between how it looks on the LCD screen because it's a JPEG file and the raw file in the computer. Yeah. But there are ways of having a very small offset and there are ways of having yes. a big offset. Yeah. And you want to make sure that you minimize that offset um, so they're looking good. 
Um, also, when you import into, into Lightroom, for example, if you import the, the Im embedded preview, you will actually also then, you're, when you're scrolling through the catalog, they will actually look exactly the same as your LCD screen. Yeah, but yeah. then when you press develop, they'll, they'll go back to the raw file. Yeah. Um, but if you get those settings right, you know, if you, um, you know, as, as I've got on mine, um, you know, there's a very, very small difference. Most people don't notice the difference. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, yes, you as a photographer always see the difference. But the average person sitting next to you should not go, oh, wow, that's changed loads. Mm. And if it has changed loads, then you probably need to tweak those JPEG settings. Mm. Mm. Yeah, good advice. Excellent. Um, thank you, Alex. Um, that's uh, a great thing. Great. Uh, a great. Uh, do you talk about LCD display settings in your book? Um, yes. Um, I And I do not offset mine. Right. I think the most important thing is to learn what you've got. So leave it, you know, if, if you're, you know, yes, if, if you're constantly underexposing, but I'm not. So all mine is set on default zero. Yeah. I've tried using other settings, but actually much better to learn and love what you've got and know it in detail, know it intimately and get a really good feeling for how it looks yeah. than to make those changes. And so I tend to just take the attitude that I'm going to learn it, okay. um, which is why I know the difference between the two cameras. Yeah. And actually when I do shoot the two side by side, I do have to make a little bit of a mental note which one I'm using. Yep. Um, but I mean, it's like a third of a stop. It's like really small, but I do notice it in the pictures. And I tend to slightly overexpose my D850 compared to my D5 yeah, yeah. as a result because the, the screen is slightly less bright. Yeah, I find that with D850 compared to D500. So yeah, same same experience. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, and thanks again to iCollapse for this episode we really appreciate the sponsor support um, please feel free to add any comments suggestions in the comment section below and drop a like if you enjoyed it thank you very much i look forward to seeing you again soon mm -hmm.